Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new Titan U lesson. This one is Storm Chasing 101, Intro to Hodographs. This is hopefully, hopefully the first of several hodograph-related episodes, lessons, courses, whatever we are calling those these days. Really, I don't know. I don't know. So this is going to be a very basic 101 level introduction to hodographs. What is a hodograph, you ask? It's this right here, using my fancy mouse pointer to show that off. Photographs are basically, well, well, we'll get to the definition here in a second, but just know that this is a very helpful tool for forecasting severe weather. If you're a storm chaser, especially a newer one, someone new to the weather community or weather enthusiast, you're wanting to learn more, follow along with storm systems better. This is a great tool for learning how to forecast severe weather. And to be quite honest, it looks super complicated. I mean, there's lines everywhere, but it's a lot simpler than you would imagine. So let's get to the next slide because I think that's going to help get us down the road on understanding these better. I will say also before I advance, if you are, if you already, if you see this, you know exactly what's going on. This lesson, not for you. It's, it's a very basic entry level. You need to move on. We're going to have more lessons in photographs, including, you know, what this shape means in relation to storm type, all those things. But this is just to get you started and know exactly how these are put together. So what is a hodograph? These charts, uh, they basically, they include lines connecting wind vectors between heights in the atmosphere. It's a very complicated definition. But to simplify it even further, every point, you see these points, that's a specific wind speed and direction with height in the atmosphere. Surface, you know, 850, 700, whatever. And these lines connect those points so basically in the very simplest sense wind speeds connected together on a chart with circles and lines we're going to get to all that here very shortly so uh one other thing to demystify these a little bit photographs are actually like very quite simple they really are they don't don't be intimidated it's like the skew tees if you haven't done our skew tee lesson short plug go do it it's amazing but these are super simple to figure out okay let's go to a blank photograph and i'll start explaining what's going on okay this is one of dozens hundreds thousands of blank photograph templates you can find on the internet i chose this one just because it's very simple north east south west that's the directions these black lines are showing and then you have these concentric circles running outwards these show wind speed so direction and speed 10 knots 20 knots 30 knots 40 knots 50 knots most charts are going to go to 100 or more but when you look at it you, you know you can see every photograph is going to be basically up is going to be north right it's going to be east down south left is west and then you're going to have these concentric circles running out which are going to show wind speed so typically you would plot wind speeds and direction with height on these to show the overall shear of an environment we're going to do a super simplified walkthrough of this to show you exactly what i mean by this okay first thing let's just say you have a southeast wind, eh, just a little under 10 or 20 knots. Let's go with 20 knots. So you have a southeast wind at just under 20 knots. So basically the wind's coming from the southeast. So you would plot it at just under 20 knots. Let's say that's 18 knots. Sounds great, right? We're not going to be too specific. This is just get the exercise. But when you plot a point, keep in mind that you're not pointing it like the winds out of the southeast you don't plot it down here you plot it in the inverse so the winds blowing this way think you're setting here where's the wind blowing it's blowing this way out of the southeast it's not you're not plotting it in the southeast you're setting here the winds blowing out of the southeast so keep in mind that this is kind of where you're setting in terms of wind speed and direction so if the winds out of the north your plot's going to be down here if it's out of the west it's going to be over here if it's out of the south it's up here somewhere okay so the southeast wind at 18 knots bam there it is plotted and then you go up in the atmosphere 
This doesn't change as you go up in the atmosphere. Let's say at 850 millibars, you have a south southeast wind at 30 knots. Well, you're sitting here, it's up in the atmosphere, but still, south southeast wind, 30 knots, bam, your 850 millibar is plotted. Then you go up to 700 millibar, and it's actually south southwest at 40 knots. Oh, this is starting to look good for storm chasing, let me tell you what. Uh, but here, right there, south southwest at 40 knots. You have another great circle plotted, so you can already tell this is where we're going with this. So let's go up to 500. What's our wind doing at 500? Let's say it's out of the west-southwest at 48 knots. So that's where your wind's at right there. So we've plotted winds, surface 850, 700, 500. Again, this is super simple. Don't don't get caught up on you know anything except the fact that we're plotting wind, direction, and speed right now, okay? So what at this point with the hodograph, you would want to connect these lines to create the hodograph shape. You can already tell what, what it looks like, you know, generally, but you would want to connect it with lines. You know, you would plot from surface to 800 to 700 to 500. Typically with hodographs in the real world scenario, it'd be more like surface, 925, 800, 850. You know, you're, you're going to get, it's not going to be this smooth, but... When you do connect all the lines, bam, that's what you get right there. Super simple. I mean, this is not that hard to understand, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm drumming on the desk hoping that this is super simple to understand. If it's not, please let me know in the comments and I will try to explain it better. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so now you have surface 850, 700, 500. You have winds with height in the atmosphere plotted from center so it's kind of simple right right here's another way to look at it if you were sitting in the center these are crudely drawn arrows please forgive me but if you are sitting right here you have a southeast wind you have a south southeast wind south southwest wind and a west southwest wind the this is you know this you plot the dots according to that this this is what your wind shear actually looks like it's turning with height i couldn't help myself but create an idealized supercell environment what can i say i'm a stickler for the classics so another thing that i would say with this is that th from here you can do a lot of things and those lot of things are going to be in future lessons i just want this to stick to the basics and when it comes to just plotting photographs, it's really that simple. There's no more magic involved than that, okay? Now, bonus lesson. You always hear about shear vectors. Say zero to 500 shear vector. It's basically connect the two points. That's your shear vector, okay? That's all. You just learned how to do photographs. It's truly that simple to plot them, okay? So, we'll have more lessons on these very soon and it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot.